You want to start your plants from seed, but when you start looking for those seeds, you find out that it can be a little confusing. Something like this tomato seed could be a hybrid, or it could be an heirloom. It might be organic or not. And of course, everyone's question, is it a GMO seed? Join me today as we discuss all the differences in the types of seeds. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott. And while the process of starting your plants from seed can be very simple, the actual process of choosing those seeds adds a level of difficulty. And some of these terms are mutually exclusive. So you will never find a hybrid heirloom organic GMO seed. And that will make more sense as we proceed in the video. All of these seeds and all the seeds that you'll find at your nursery, garden center, or online will fall into two basic categories. They'll either be hybrid or open pollinated seeds. Now the hybrids have been developed by these seed companies. So in the case of this Burpee Sweet 100 tomato, it's a hybrid seed. And I know that because it tells me on the package it's a hybrid. And you can expect that hybrid seeds will be identified by the seed companies on the package or in the catalog you're ordering from. If it doesn't say hybrid seed on the package, well then you can assume pretty correctly that it's an open pollinated seed. For the hybrids, what these seed companies will do is take two different parent plants. So in the case of the Sweet 100, they'll take the male pollen from the flower of one type of tomato and they'll introduce it into the flower of a different type of tomato. And then they'll allow the fruit to grow from that flower and then save the seed and then plant that seed and see what results. And so a lot of these seed companies have spent a lot of time and effort and money developing the hybrid plants that we want to grow in our garden, like the Sweet 100. The key thing to take away from these hybrid plants that we're growing, if we save the fruit from those plants, in this case, some of these Sweet 100 tomatoes, if we save that seed and then plant it the next year, there's no telling what kind of plant is going to result. Because of the way genetics works, we're only getting that first generation of Sweet 100 tomatoes. Beyond that, it could be anything. So generally, we don't save the seed from the fruit of hybrid plants because that seed is not going to grow true to its parentage. Every year we want to grow Sweet 100, we'll have to start with new Sweet 100 hybrid seed rather than saving our own. In the case of open pollinated seeds, it's the complete opposite. And that's typically why we want to grow those plants. Those open pollinated plants will produce fruit that if we save the seed from that fruit and then plant it to grow again, the resulting fruit will be exactly the same as the parents. So if you want to save your seed to save money and because you find a variety that you like, saving the open pollinated seeds will allow you to continue to grow generation after generation of those plants. But that's just not the case with the hybrids. It would be nice if all the seed companies followed the same basic pattern of identifying on the package if it's a hybrid or identifying on the package if it's open pollinated. But that isn't the case. With a seed package like this from Seeds of Change, this is Corvair F1 spinach. It doesn't say that this is a hybrid, but this often has to come from experience learning that F1 means this is a hybrid seed. F is 
filial. And the filial one seed essentially means that this is the first generation from the parents that produced this seed. So while most of the seed companies will identify it as hybrid, some companies will identify it as F1. In this case, treat it like a hybrid because that's exactly what it is. You'll have other companies like the case of this American seed with this early crookneck squash, they'll identify it as heirloom. Well, all heirloom seeds are open pollinated seeds. So you can assume if it's not labeled as F1 or hybrid that it's open pollinated. But if it's specifically identified as heirloom, you know that it's an open pollinated seed. You can save this seed and expect to get the exact type of plant. But that doesn't hold true with an F1 hybrid. There are a number of different reasons why you might choose to grow a hybrid versus an open pollinated. Remember, the hybrids are being developed for very specific characteristics. And if you're not saving the seed, a hybrid may give you what you're looking for. If you want a tomato plant that produces a lot of delicious red cherry tomatoes, well then Sweet 100 may be the way to go. And if you're not worried about saving the seed, you can grow this in your garden every year. But if you're looking for a small yellow tasty heirloom tomato, you might want to go with a lemon drop like this from Seed Savers Exchange. There's no agreed upon definition of exactly what heirloom seed means. For most gardeners, it means that the seed has some story to tell, like in the case of this lemon drop. And on the package, it talks about the gardener discovering it amongst other plants and then it being developed in 2010. For some gardeners, heirloom seeds have to be old enough that they predate World War II. That's because after World War II, through the 1950s, a lot of these seed companies began developing the hybrids for the home gardener. Before World War II, you really didn't see that. And so in the case of many of these tomatoes, when you read the package or when you see the backstory online, you'll discover that some of these seeds go back generations. In the case of some heirloom seeds, the story goes back over a hundred years. You can buy seeds that were grown in the gardens of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Those definitely have a story to tell and they're definitely heirloom seeds. Some of the more recent heirlooms that we'll find in our garden may not have as interesting a story, but they still fall into that open pollinated category. There are some companies like Baker Creek heirloom seeds that specialize in growing and producing for the home gardener the seeds that are heirlooms with a story to tell. And the Baker Creek catalog has some wonderful stories of where they get their seeds. You have other companies that specialize in organic seeds, like these seeds of change. And they'll be identified with a certified organic symbol on it. Well, this is where more confusion comes because as I look through these packages, I have very few that actually have this symbol. What this symbol means is that the producer of the seed, in this case, the growers at Seeds of Change, took the time, energy, and paid the money to be certified by the government as an organic grower. The seeds that result from this organic growing can now be labeled as certified organic. But there really isn't any difference in the way that the plants will grow. This is one of those philosophical discussions in gardening. I can grow this Boston Pickling Cucumber, which is an open pollinated. I can grow this Black Crim, which is open pollinated. I can grow this Slow Bolt Cilantro that is open pollinated. The difference is this is the only one that has been certified organic. If you want to support the concept of organic growing, well then these are the type of seeds that you might want to buy. 
But once they get into your garden, the plant really doesn't know the difference as to how it was produced or how it was labeled on the seed package. If you continue to grow using organic methods, well then you can consider that your seed is organic seed. You have to go through that process and fill out all the paperwork and pay the money for your own seed to be certified organic, but most of us as home gardeners really don't care about that. So whether you start with organic seed or start with a seed that is not certified organic, if you practice the methods of organic gardening and grow an open pollinated seed and then save it, well, in essence, you are continuing that philosophy and the concept behind organic gardening. At the other end of the spectrum are GMO seeds. GMO means genetically modified organism. And organic seeds cannot be GMO seeds. So you'll see a lot of companies that will market the fact that they have non-GMO seeds. If they're identified as certified organic, you automatically know that they won't be GMO. But for the home gardener, you also know none of these seeds will be GMO seeds. If you thought it took a lot of time and effort to develop a hybrid, it takes an incredible amount of time and effort to create a GMO seed. So the laboratories that are doing that currently are only doing it for agriculture at the industrial scale. The corn seed, the rape seed, these massive growth operations are often growing GMO seed. But it's not worth it to the laboratories or to the seed producers to develop those kind of seeds for the home gardener. So you can't buy GMO seeds. And anytime you might see it identified in a catalog or on the seed package as non-GMO, well, that's just a marketing ploy in most cases because all of these seeds and all of the seeds that you'll find in the stores and online will be non-GMO, whether they're labeled that way or not. As you develop this better understanding of seeds, I think reading a seed package actually takes on a new life, more understanding and a better opportunity to learn. So when I look at this seed package for this butter crunch lettuce from True Leaf Market, it tells me about Cornell University in 1963 producing this type of butter crunch. And when I look at this New England sugar pie seed packet from Baker Creek, it takes me back even a hundred years more and talks about 1863 is when these seeds were first being developed. I find that incredibly fascinating. The stories behind the seeds that you can find on the seed packages with the understanding of what all of the terminology actually means. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.